What's up guys? So today we're looking at a Kershaw. That's right, a Kershaw knife. God, it's been a minute since I've talked about something from Kershaw. Uh, I actually have a ton of knives from Kershaw and Gerber and CRKT and things like that, but uh, I just haven't made a video in a long time. Just one of those things, but it just kind of dawned on me, so I figured I would talk about this. This is the Kershaw Flourish. Now, it kind of takes me back to the roots of the channel, you know? I mean, I've always done a variety of different things. In fact, my first video on YouTube, if you don't know, had nothing to do with knives. My very first video on YouTube, and you can check it out if you want, but it didn't even have sound. Back then, people weren't, you know, vlogging and any of that kind of stuff. I had a point and shoot camera that took pictures. It was a regular old camera, click, 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 um, digital, of course, but it had a video feature on it and it didn't even have sound. And I made like, I don't know, a one minute or two minute video of uh, showing how to make a friction fire. <laughs> so eventually that led on to other videos and I showed a knife. I think the first knife I ever showed on YouTube was a, it was the Benchmade Griptilian, a full size in D2. It was a special limited release from Cabela's. And back then D2 wasn't what D2 is today. It was actually special, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah. And I made videos for a while with no sound. And eventually I got a different camera and had some sound. But anyway, uh, just a little blast because I'm, I'm thinking about all like my old videos and stuff and I showed so many just probably dozens and dozens of you know just really affordable knives and at some point I you know I started getting into the more expensive knives at least on, on video and stuff and you know people want to see more variety and anyway I'm uh, rambling on here just seeing that Kershaw logo it, it brings me back to making videos like you know 10 years ago or so I just uh I tend to not focus on this kind of stuff because we've seen so many Kershaws, so many CRKTs, you know, so many buck knives. Uh, and then these days you hear just We and Civivi, Cancept and, you know, all these different Chinese brands and stuff. But, you know, I'm still using stuff like this, you know, so it's, it's time to show some of it. Um, anyway, this is the Kershaw Flourish. All right. It's the model 3935, which is marked on the back here. Um, this sells for under 40 bucks, anywhere from like 35 to 40 bucks. Uh, Kershaw obviously offering a ton of affordable knives, the sub hundred and in many cases, sub $50 uh, knife market, you know, so ton of different designs. This one I got in a trade. I don't know how long ago it's been at least a year, maybe even longer. Um, this has become somewhat of a, a beater knife. Uh, in the sense that it just kind of floats around from drawer to drawer or here or there. Sometimes lands in my pocket, sometimes not. Um, but yeah, I figured it's finally time to do a video on it. So uh, some specs on this, 3.5 inches. We have a hollow ground blade. This one is in 8CR13 MOV, which is also marked on the back of the blade. All right, so you see 39, 35. KAI is obviously the mother company to uh, Kershaw, if you don't know. So Kershaw is basically their cheaper line, and uh, Shun Knives is their kitchen line of stuff. And of course, the favorite American company, I think the all-American Kershaw is what I call it. But the ZT line, or Zero Tolerance, that's what it was. It was the focus on American-made, high-end, essentially versions of Kershaw. So I always saw those as brothers, right? ZT is the American big brother. And, uh, you know, Kershaw is the foreign little brother. But there's nothing wrong with either one of them. It just depends on what you're looking for. Uh, but even though I've enjoyed quite a few ZT knives, and I, I have to say they're, they're fantastic, they are expensive, but they are offering a lot for those price tags. But got to go back to the roots. Kershaw is where it's at if you just want a, a cheap, simple knife. You know, all these knives work. Some are more comfortable than others. Some have, you know, maybe little kinks here and there, things that you might not like about them, you know, mostly it's ergonomics for me. I don't have too many uh, issues at all with like fit finish or any kind of quality issues with Kershaw's and stuff, but you will sometimes get inconsistencies. Once in a blue moon, you'll get a knife that doesn't have the best lockup. Now, overall, I have to say I do like the design. I think it's kind of an aggressive design. I like this uh, fuller that's cut out here. This is a liner lock, all right, and it is an assisted knife, all right? So assisted opening, this has the speed safe because it is officially Kershaw, so it's officially the speed safe uh, assisted opening, which was designed by Ken Onion back in, I think, 98 or 99, something like that. Um, but you can see the flipper here. Flipper has tons of jimping on it. It is very textured. It's very easy to use. All right, just push a little bit in and boom, it shoots out. Lockup is pretty good. It's like 99.5% perfect. There's a tiny bit of side to side, but no matter how much I play with the pivot, I can't remove that. But at least it's not up and down. It's just a touch side to side. What is kind of nice about these fullers that are on both sides here 
all right, is that these uh, can be used to flick the knife out without using the flipper, all right, because there's a sharp ledge here. So you can just kind of flick that out. Or what's really interesting about this one, which you usually don't see on speed safe, is you actually have the option of opening this slowly, all right, which some people don't get with uh, regular assisted knives. Usually it's like a flipper and that's it. But if you put a little bit of pressure this way, as you're pushing this open, almost like, you know, if you use it as a thumb hole or something, you can actually overcome that spin tension, just open it slowly. All right, so let's say you're in the middle of the grocery store, you don't want to flick it out, so the old lady buying her oatmeal down the aisle there tells the manager that you got some kind of crazy weapon. You could just open it nice and slow, all right? Cut that little string that was off your shirt, and she'll say, wow, what a nice young man. <laughs> but if you flick it out, you're now a criminal. Um, so I do like that option. Something I don't normally see where I have the option of actually opening it slowly, because I'm not a huge fan uh, of assisted knives. I made that pretty clear, but I don't mind them. You know, when it's applicable, it's fine. In this case, you probably could take this apart, take the speed safe uh, bar out, just kind of like a Kershaw leak or something, um, and it would be manual. However, most times that's keeping the tension inside, you know, keeping the blade closed, in other words. So if you take it out, it won't be assisted anymore, but it, who knows, it might be floppy, it might be flopping out. I'm not sure if it's actually going to retain in because this is designed to just be an assisted opening knife. Anyway, um, as far as ergonomics, it's not that bad. It is pretty comfortable in the hand. There is a little jimping on the spine there that my thumb lands perfectly on. It's almost like it was supposed to be there, uh, but it does work. It is functional jimping. I have to say the handle scales are just a touch on the sharp side. I don't even want to say sharp. But they, they definitely could be smoothed out just a little bit more. You know, maybe that's what you're paying an extra 10 or 20 or $30 more on the more expensive knives out there. Who knows? But it's little tiny things like this that can make you like a knife or not like a knife. It's not that big of a deal, but it's sharp enough where it's worth mentioning. Uh, normal cutting, fine. But if you're really cutting hard all day long, whatever, you're going to feel that. You know, especially in here, just this G10, it definitely could have been smoothed out a little bit. Let me give you a close shot of that. All right, just some of these edges. It could have been cleaned up a little bit, that's all. Same on the back. Now, if you notice, this is a carbon fiber look because it is carbon fiber, but not all the way through. It's a laminate. All right, so basically have G10 scales, and you can see these cuts. You can see the G10, but then there's a layer of real carbon fiber on top of it, so you still get that look on the flat part of the handle. All right, let's zoom back out here for a second. Um... But yeah, I mean, the HCR 13 MOV, totally adequate, totally fine. Just like, in my opinion, people will crap all over like 440C or HCR 13 MOV, and they'll be like, blah, 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 blah. It's crap. I, I disagree. It's not crap. It's appropriate for the price range. Would I love to see D2? Yes. I'd love to see 154. Yes. I'd love to see S30V. Yes. But I don't. I see HCR 13 MOV. And honestly, I'm totally fine with that. Just like AUS 8. It still works. Is it the best? No, it's far from the best. However, it's very easy to sharpen. It's very easy to maintain, and I'm fine with that. I'm cool with it. Overall, I think this is a uh, medium to large size knife. I wear XL size gloves, but you know, it's, it has a fairly large presence. Even though the blade's only three and a half inches long, it does feel like a big knife to me. Um, so you have really tiny hands. It might seem like it's too big. Uh, but if you happen to have, you know, meteor hands or something like that, it, it'll, it'll definitely fill it out. I get a full full grip on this. All right, you can see there's a little cutout on the uh, scales on both sides. All right, and there is a spot for a lanyard hole, quite large as well. All right, this is not a flow-through design or what I would consider flow-through. The backspacer comes past like the halfway point. So we have a little space here for dust and dirt and lint and stuff to blow through. I do like the uh, little touch of detail on the spacer. All right, I'm assuming that is a piece of G10. But just nice little, little detail there. It's kind of cool. There is uh, jimping on the bottom here as well. So if you wanted to, uh, you know, hold this in a reverse grip, which is, by the way, very comfortable. You have a little basically thumb rest here and the jimping. Not as purposeful as the jimping on the back of the blade, uh, but it does, you know, it does work, I guess. Get your thumbs flat anyway. I did do a little bit of stabbing just into a little, you know, small stack of uh, cardboard. Quite satisfying. Uh, that's the teenage boy in me who likes to stab stuff. Uh, are you going to stab with this knife? Probably not, uh, unless you're really uh, excited to get that Amazon box open. But uh, yeah, I don't think there's any issues though at all with you slipping. That's one benefit to a lot of these different flippers is that the flipper obviously doubles as your little guard. All right, so you have less of a chance of your hand riding forward if your hands are wet or slippery or something. 
Uh, overall, it's not going to be anything that's going to impress your buddies who have, you know, Sabenzas and uh, Rick Hinder knives and all these just awesome stuff. Uh, they're probably going to look at you and say, why are you showing me that? However, if you're not all about bragging, this is a very usable, everyday guy's knife. You know, you could be uh, a plumber or something, totally fine. You could just be some dude, you know, who's maybe working at the supermarket. Um, you know, might be a nice backup blade to your box cutter or something, you know, in case your box cutter blade breaks or goes dull on you in the middle of your day. You can zip open some boxes with this. It's just a working span knife, you know. It's not, not super expensive. Definitely leaves room for improvement. If you're obsessed with knives like I am and lots of other people, you automatically start comparing this to $100 knives, $200 knives. Unfair. You just you can't do that. Just because this doesn't have the latest and greatest steel, just because it's not the most um, you know ergonomic handle or, or you know the, the most uh, cool new design or super beefy, so you can hit it with a sledgehammer or you know do the, the spine whack test. You don't need any of that stuff. That stuff's cool. Don't get me wrong. I love that stuff, but you don't need it. It doesn't make it a bad knife. There's still a huge market for affordable knives. Not everyone wants to go out and spend even 50 bucks on a knife or 100 bucks. You know, so if you're looking in the range from 30 to 40, this is definitely a contender. I have to say there are literally thousands to choose from in the 20 or you know 30 to 40 dollar range. And even even Kershaw, there's dozens, dozens of different Kershaw knives between 30 and 40 bucks to choose from. Why would you choose this one? Well, because it looks cool. But I'm here to tell you, it works fine. It, it cuts great. The hollow ground blade. I mean, I do prefer like a full flat over hollow ground. Uh, but it works. It works very well. It, it slices very nice as long as you can, you know, maintain that edge. Uh, and there's enough blade here. It's cool looking. I do like the, the fuller look. Uh, again, I like the just very small advantage that even though this is an assisted flipper, I can open it slowly. That's kind of cool. You don't get that on a lot of uh, assisted knives. But if you like it fast, it, it certainly works fast as well. Um, but yeah, pretty cool. I could dig it. But yeah. A, a, a new Kershaw. Well, it's not new to anyone. It's been around, but uh, new to me. I think it's pretty neat. Uh, as far as the uh, pocket clip, we have, again, that laminate um, carbon fiber over the G10. It is super slick, which is nice. Uh, I wouldn't worry about grip so much with this particular, you know, style or shape of knife. Uh, but what is nice about that super slick side is that that's where your, your pants material rests. So it's very easy to get in and out of the pocket. Uh, a, a bunch of the knife shows, though, I will tell you that. All right, having this... Uh, you know, carry for EDC, it was poking up quite a bit there. Again, you know, it's nitpicking. If you want a deep conceal knife, there's plenty of those. So there you go, just another option, but I am here to remind you there are lots of options. It's not like this is the only knife for, you know, 38 bucks or whatever. Um, it's just another one for 38 bucks. So if you think it's cool looking, it's definitely affordable. You know, sometimes even the people who buy expensive knives, they just, you know, maybe they're a little short this week and they just want a new knife and, hey, you get a more affordable one. Just, uh, just a cool option. But let me know out there for all the, the Kershaw fans and stuff. Have you, uh, you know, owned or currently own the Flourish? What do you think of yours? But I think it's pretty neat. Pretty cool. So there you go. Even though this is, in fact, a Chinese-made knife, it's a more recognizable brand. I think a lot of people might be overwhelmed with, uh, you know, how the knife industry has expanded so much to all these different Chinese brandings. And everything's all new. And is that good? Or I don't know about that. Everyone knows Kershaw. They know the deal, but they've been making Chinese knives way before all these other Chinese companies are coming here with Chinese names. You know what I'm saying? Um, so it's not a big deal, but they're definitely decent knives and money. Uh, and if, again, you're on a budget, this is the kind of stuff you're looking at. So I wanted to focus today and, and break something out that was a little more recognizable with that the nice Kershaw branding on there. I've always loved them. Kershaw, CRKT, like I said, nothing wrong with them. Uh, if you're on a budget, they make some pretty cool knives. And they make a ton of different models. That's the most important part. Lots to choose from. So anyway, that is all. Hopefully you guys have a fantastic day. Thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you tomorrow with a brand new video. Take care.